Hope you're all again right. Um, today on my table, what have we got? Okay, this is for my second suit. So I'm going to be drafting a pair of trousers. So some of you will be fascinated by it, some of you won't. I may edit the um, the video down because it will take quite a while to actually video the whole front, cutting out the front and back trousers. I'm going to do it the, the traditional way. So a lot of tailors will use the fabric. So actually cuts now if I've got a regular customer I will actually make a pattern and then I'll use that pattern you know for cutting in five pairs ten pairs of trousers so but this customers will only be having one pair of trousers so I'm not going to make him a pattern so I'm going to what we call direct drafting I'm going to directly draft on, on this on this fabric now the fabric is folded over and the salvage is um, placed and the, the salvage the salvages will have it's woven uh, together that's called a salvage I, can, I don't know if you can see this i don't want to be lifting up too much the edge basically it's the edge so they're 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 put together they're pressed first you always press on both sides and then then you lay it flat on the table okay now i've got his measurements here so his measurements are outside leg 39 inside leg 30 and a half waist is 33 and a half seat is 42 hem knee is 17 inch and hem is 17 inch. Now I, I work out this before I draft. So because um, I'm wor working on quarter of, of the pattern, I have to quarter um, some of the some of this some of the measurements. So I actually quarter I'll actually half the seat, which becomes 21. Then I quarter of the seat, which is 10 and a half. And I do the same for the knee and the hem. And the waist I do half. So I all I get everything worked out before I draft. Just makes it a lot easier and quicker. I've got my little trusted uh, tools of the trade here. I've got my my L square. Traditionally, they use wooden ones. I do have a wooden one which my 91-year-old tailor gave me for for convenience, and I don't want to be using that because it's a it's a vintage square. I use the modern ones. You, I think you get the Fairgate from America. And I've got my meter metal ruler there. You can see that. So there's your little L square there. And then I've got I got from this lovely old tailor, George Saunders. He died about three years ago. Lovely tailor from St. Kitts who taught me actually how to uh, pattern cut. I just like a hockey stick. So if you want to play hockey with me, come come to my shop. So this is a quite a vintage old. And I use this for uh, curving the actual fork of the side. You'll see me do that. And then I've got another ruler. So I use this as well for the side seam of the front. So, and then I've got my little, uh, what we call grading square so this is a smaller version i can square everything off on this there are many ways you can go to youtube thing and meet many tags there are so many ways of drafting um, jackets and trousers and waistcoats um i've learned from is it four different tailors and i've got my own system now so i've taken a bit of one tailor a bit of another tailor and a bit of another tailor and i've created my own system of cutting trousers and they fit very good so i'm not going to complain about that so i'm going to show you my version and so we're going to get started so basically once you've uh, taken these measurements and you've got to measure uh, measure measure the customer accurately otherwise you won't get an accurate pattern okay now of course as i said before you've got to have fittings with everything you can be the best pattern cutter in the world but you've still got to have fittings so um we will be having a fitting after this which i will show you okay so the very first thing you do we'll just at the top here at the top here we're going to work our way down the salvage down what we call the grain i'm just going to just draw a line across okay so i don't want to and you you need to preserve the fabric so i'll come kind of quite up at the top okay you want to preserve because this fabric is expensive it's kind of nearly 100 pounds a meter about 70 pounds a meter or whatever plus fat okay um right so, so that line is drawn there now now i'm going to draw a line down okay so where this salvage is some tailors don't but i draw a look because sometimes this the way this salvage is knitted uh, the way it's woven so not knitted the way it's woven it becomes tight so you can never get a straight line so i'm going to just draw a straight line down from here usually i'll, I'll square it off to use my square so i'll make sure everything's square you've got to make sure everything's squared off Okay, so I'm just going to square this up from here now. Okay, so you'll see what I do. I use the top line now, and I'm just going to square it all off. Okay, so you've got to make sure everything is square. Okay, so I'll just do this. Make sure you've got a nice sharp chalk. You've got to have a sharp chalk. Make sure it's sharp. And I'll just continue that line all the way down. 
So I know now this is all squared off, so it's all straight, so all that right angles. So you need, otherwise you can get a wonky pair of trousers. You've got to follow the grain, okay? So that's squared. So, so do a line across and square it down, okay? Now, the very first thing you do, you get the outside leg, okay? So this outside leg is 39. Now, some tailors will measure, uh, my 91 yard tailor, you measure from where you always ask the customer where their trousers sit, then you take the measurement off. So usually you'll take it from the top of the waistband. My 91 yard tailor, he actually measures from underneath the waistband where it finishes. So that's what I've measured that from. So this is 39 inches plus the waistband, which is approximately an inch and a half. So basically the whole of the outside leg will be 40 and a half. But for convenience sake, he only measures um, from, from below the waistband, where the waistband finishes, and then that's the measurement we use. Instead of calculating, you've got to, because usually you would take the outside measurement minus the waistband. But this way you don't have to worry about taking off the waistband because you, you've done it from the bottom of the waistband. So anyway, so this is 39. So we're going to measure 39 from the top, 39 inches down, okay? I'm, you're off camera now, but it doesn't matter. 39 inches down, okay? So I'm going to mark that 39 inches down at the hem. And the inside leg is 13 and a half. So from the hem, you come up 30 and a half. And that's your inside leg measurement. Now that inside leg measurement actually is your rise. Your rise is your trouser from, from the crotch at the bottom to where the waistband is. That's your what we call your uh, crotch line, your body rise line, okay? So there's that. So always double check. So from the hem, I've come down 39, okay? And then from, from there, I come up 13 and a half, which is 13 and a half. Now we want to get the knee. So the knees, you just put that tape, it's a half of this, so an easy way, just put the tape measure in half there, fold that in half, and then you can mark that temporarily and come up two inches from that mark. That is your knee measurements. So it's half your inside leg plus two inches up, and that is your knee measurement. So now I've got the top on waistband, I've got my my body rise, the inside leg, and I've got my knee, and I've got my hem, which is at the bottom, which you can't see. So now I'm going to square that all off, okay? So you can use your square, okay? So just make sure it's all squared off. So make sure that's level there, okay? And we're going to just chalk mark across there, okay? And we're going to do the same here, where the knee is. Now, now we're going to square the knee across. Make sure every, you've got to be totally accurate, okay? We're making like 350 pound pair of trousers. Some of the trousers can be 500 pounds. Some of it, in Savile Row, they're a thousand pounds. Same way, what I'm doing. Okay, so you've got to make sure everything is accurate. Now I'm just doing the hem now, which is off camera, but it's all the same, which you've seen. So now I'm doing the hem, okay? All squared off nicely. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. So you've got four lines. You've got your waistline. You've got your inside leg line, which is your, your body rise. You've got your knee line, and you've got your hem line. Okay, so I'm just gonna double check, always double check sometimes when I'm talking to you um, the, and I might just forget what I've done. So the outside leg, 39. So from the waist, 39. Check, 39, that's it. Inside leg measurement from the hem is 30 and a half. 30 and a half, good. And the knee is half of 30 and a half, which is 15 and a quarter, plus two inches. So that's 17 and a quarter from there. There we go. So it's all in there now. That's your basic guidelines for your pair of trousers. The next thing we're going to do now is a seat. Now we are we're working on a quarter of a pattern. Okay, so we're only working on, on the front side, a quarter of the whole pattern. Okay, so now we're working on the seat. So the seat is 42. So I've already worked out a quarter of the seat, which is 10 and a half. So where my inside leg is at the top is where my seat line is going to be. It's ten and a quarter, ten, sorry, ten and a half. So I measure ten and a half, and I put a half an inch allowance, ease allowance, just for extra ease. Okay, that's eleven. Mark that. Now we square that line up to the waist. Okay. So we're going to make sure everything is squared off. So there we go. And there's your, and that's your 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 centre front line. Okay, where your fly would go, the zip would go there. Now, we're going to do a third of this. 
So from that line there to the top, so your inside leg line to the top, it's the third, all right? So the third of that, this is, so that's 22. So a third of that, 20, 7, 14, 21. So 7.3, okay? About 7.3 and a half, okay? We're gonna go 7.3 centimeters, and we're gonna go over here. So this is a third of that line, okay? So, and this is what I teach on my tailoring course. So you would learn everything on, like this on my tailoring course. So we'll draw that line in, okay? And that is your, that is your true seat line, because your seat line is never on the, with the crotch at the bottom. Your true seat line is actually above, and that is your true seat line. Your true seat line is a third of your inside leg at the bottom, your body rise, and at the top, it's a third of that. That is your true seat line, where we're gonna measure. Okay, now, from there, we're gonna get our back seat line, which is about three centimeters up from there. So I'm gonna just draw three centimeters up, and that goes to nothing on the side seam there. This is your, this will be your back line. It'll all make sense when I've actually drafted it all. So basically we're just getting all our guidelines in there, okay? Now, I come at two and a half inches, that's standard for all guys, okay? They sometimes will use a scale to get your, your crotch um, width there, but, and so they use a scale. I use two and a half and it's always worked for me. So I'm gonna come at two and a half where that center front line is, two and a half inches, and we mark our line there. Now, this is your true seat line here. So from here, we're going to just bring that and nicely, and we're gonna get a nice curve. And we're gonna just bring that down. Just gonna get a nice curve down to there, okay? There is our crotch. This is our French crotch here, it's underneath. Okay, so we've got that sorted. Right, okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna find our crease line, our center front line. So our crease line, well, it's, it's our crease line. So we're gonna find our crease line here, which is in the center of the trousers. We find that by half of that measurement where, where we came at two and a half inches. So we go to the end there, and that measures to that, that measures 13 and a half, okay? Half of 13 and a half is, I said half of 13 and a half. Sometimes if you get stuck, just flip it over to the centimeters. I work in Imperial and metric, I use both. So 30, so that's 34 centimeters from, from the fork line to the side seam, 17. Okay, 17 centimeters, okay? So now we're gonna go 17, 17, 17 centimeters all the way down, okay? So I'm gonna go off camera now, but you'll see. So now I'm at the hem, 17 centimeters, right? We've got a big long ruler, and we're gonna draw our center front line. Oh, I forgot to do the waist. 17 centimeters, okay? And then we're just going to draw our center line in, okay? So just get that and just marry all that up, okay? And here's our crease line. Okay, there's our crease line there, okay? So hopefully you can see all that now. All right? So I'll put that back there. Hopefully you can see that. All right? Okay, so now... So now we'll find our knee and our hem. So I've already worked out, we're working on a quarter of the pattern. So a quarter of the knee is four and a, four and a quarter. So we measure on that, cent, that crease line now, four and a quarter inches on the one side and four and a quarter inches on the other, which will be eight and a half. Now that's a quarter of the pattern. So when we put the, the back to that, that'll be the same. So that will be, that will be totaling 17 inches. So that, that knee width will total 17, okay? We're gonna do the same for hem. This is parallel trousers. So the hem is 17. So so quarter of 17 is four and a quarter inches. So we're gonna do the same here. Four and a quarter, okay? Four and a quarter, which will be eight and a half. Okay? And now these lines, we just We'll just put together. I'm going to get my ruler one second. Use a lot of rulers here. Okay. So now I'm going to draw my side seam, my side seams in, and my inside seam in for the front. 
and then I'll do me from the outside seam. There we go. Okay, so now we've got to get our inside, inside here, the inside um, area, inside area there. Now sometimes we'll use a thigh measurement and I'll go accordingly. I don't use a thigh measurement, never have, and it's always worked for me. But if you've got a big bodybuilding thigh, then you'd have to take a thigh measurement and go accordingly. Now, I will use my, my ruler now. And don't forget our body's not straight, it's got it's all got a slight curve. So this you want you don't want the inside leg to be too curved. So you get more kind of a little bit straighter, but not too curved, but not too straight either. This is why I use the, these rulers because they'll they'll actually give me the, the exact curve I want. So there we go. So you've got your inside leg, okay? You've got your knee and you've got your hem. So we're nearly there now for the front. We're going to do the the um, side seam here. So what I do on the side seam there, that straight line, I come in about centimeter to centimeter and a half on that straight edge, and that will give me my run of my side seam curve. And I come up at a centimeter at the top of this waistband because we've got curves. We're like women, we've got curves. So that fabric has got to go over our hip bone. Our hips so we've got to have a little extra on the side seam to accommodate that I bring us up a centimeter and that's that suffice and when that centimeter is there I'll curve that to the to the crease line there so if I do that there you'll see it's only a fraction to that crease line there we go and that's in there okay it's only a very small little curve there to accommodate the, the hip as it goes over the hip of the fabric. Okay, now I'm going to bring this in here, okay, and when you're going to use my my ruler, and I'm just going to this this is why this ruler is designed to actually go. Now the side seam from the knee to the thing you want it try and keep it nearly as straight. There's a very fractal curve on there. We're not women. Women will have more curves, but as men we've got. We've got to try and keep this nearly as straight as possible, not totally straight, because none of us are straight, you know. We don't have right angles and straights. So we, our body is curved, we have a very slight curve on the side, but not too much. I've seen some cutters and they put a massive curve on there. If you put on the side a massive curve, it will never ever, it will get this like bubble, that like what we call a tit effect on the side. You want to try and keep this as flat as possible on the side. All right, so I use this ruler now. That's pretty much got the, that's pretty got, got pretty much the actual, the angle and the edge and the straight edge of that. So I'll put that to the top there, come in a centimetre and a half. And then I'm going to just, just put that there, okay. And I'm just gonna just draw that in there and bring that to the knee, okay. And there we go. And so you, have to, you have to check it and just see if it's all right. I'm just gonna just bring this back in a fraction, just I think it can just come in out a little bit. It's only a fraction, but it's fine. Okay. So I'll just show you here. See? So you've got this nice fraction, very slight curve, and it comes there. And that's it. I've come in a centimetre and a half there at the top of the waist. And I brought it up here. Can you see? Because that's that was that's gonna go over your hip. And that's it. And there's your there's your side seam. Okay. And <clears throat> your front's done. Right? So I'm going to put a dart in here. Sometimes I don't put darts in, but some of my old tags said you've got to put, you should put a dart in because it actually accommodates the front here and gives a better fit. That's a bit of a contention it as well amongst tailors. <laughs> so I've done without darts and the fit the, the customer good. And especially um, I, because I believe a lot of customers, a lot of men, they wear the trousers low. They don't wear the trousers high up anymore on their um, on their waist anymore. They, everyone wears their trousers low. So you don't really need too much of a dart there, to be quite honest. But I will put a dart there because it will get, allow a little bit of ease here across the front so it won't be tight. So I usually put a centimetre either side, a dart. Sometimes we'll just put half an inch either side. So I'll put there. And I'll come down about, um, I'll come down about three and a half inches down, okay? About three and a quarter, three and a half inches. Okay, and there we go. Then I'll put the dart in there. And your front is finished. Right, so on my next video, I'll actually um, 
you'll see me cut the back out okay so this is in two parts this video so here we are so it's all finished here now now the only the one thing we've got to do finish off with this is our finished hem here so we've got to put um the hem turn up what we call hem allowance i usually put it i usually put about two and a half inches it will be trimmed off but to to make sure i put about two and a half inches and it will be trimmed off anyway afterwards so that's straight across and when we make the trousers up you'll be you'll angle the hem anyway because the back is lo the back is longer than the front by about half an inch the actual hem allowance so i'll just show you in a minute and that's it the front's done so it can be done very quickly the front and then you will use the front as a template to cut the back out which you'll see i'm going to do so there we go now there's a hem allowance it's about two and a half inches that will be trimmed off accordingly afterwards and i never leave that much when it's finished and this is the um the trousers so hopefully you can see the trousers so you've got your dart you've got your uh, your slight curve of the side seam and it's gone up a centimeter to accommodate the hip and then you've got your fork so sometimes we'll do a narrow one up i do a wider one so that's down to personal preference and then you've got your seat line where you'll measure at the end the seat and then that's the, that's the back seat uh, on the back so you you see all that when i do there's the knee and that's the hem so there we go so i will see you on my next video and i'll just say ciao for now